Oh, okay. Uh, so franchise mode is broken again, but they never really fixed the previous issues, so it's even more broken than it was before. Awesome. What's going on Buffalo and welcome back to your broken NHL 21 very broken franchise mode cup for Jack here on broken NHL 21 broken franchise mode. Yes franchise mode is broken all over again there's a new glitch to where I can't really replicate it without making a trade but basically what happens I'm not going to stay on this topic for long because we got an exciting episode ahead of us here but basically when you make a trade your roster needs to be edited you can't manually put the player you just traded or if you play with injuries on you basically have to go best lines every single time or else the screen will just freeze it'll just lock you it happened to me last week when I was about 40 minutes into a recording thank god I had a previous save backed up I basically lost an entire episode if so that's why there hasn't been a video for a couple days I said on Twitter that I wasn't gonna make another episode until this glitch is now fixed because with the recent patch obviously the patch broke something else and they still haven't fixed trade values franchise modes a mess but we're gonna try to make the best of it I don't know how long this glitch is going to be in the game for so unfortunately I can't uh, I can't just wait around forever and I'm not gonna just not make a video so we just basically have to be extra careful to not screw up our save file basically this is gonna be a best line friendly franchise mode but we have some things to deal with here in Buffalo. We are 31, 15, and 4. We're 5, 5, and 0 oh in our last 10. Slowing down a little bit. We're still first in our division while we're tied with the Tampa Bay Lightning. They have more regulation wins than us. We've got a couple more OT losses. And then the Maple Leafs are right behind us with 64 points. But I've made an executive decision, all right? I'm putting my foot down. Executive GM decision. We are going all in on chemistry. That's right, baby. And I've done some things I've done some pre-scouting and I've looked at all the comments and I've come up with this master plan well, kind of. Matt Klassen, my man, he says, put Cousins on the first line. He will have a monster year. He says monster in capital letters, so you know this guy's serious. On the first line, he'll be a 90 by the end of the year. I really don't think he's going to jump six overall in the next 32 games because we're 50 games in, but I don't think it's going to hurt, all right? He fits well on the first line. It gives this line a plus three, which originally it was only a plus one with Victor Olofsson. So I made this one simple change of throwing Dylan Cousins up here, chucking Olafson down on the second line, and boom, both of these lines are now a plus three. Boom, now it's a plus three, and our big dogs also get a plus three, which is really the most important thing. These guys carry our team, and Dylan Cousins is 20 years old. We gotta give this guy the limelight, put him on the first line, gives it a plus three, amazing. We have a 97 overall on the first line right now with Jack Eichel, so I'm all in in on the chemistry, but yes, that leaves Jeff Skinner. What do we do with Jeff Skinner? John Dion, he says, you should go Hall, Eichel, Cousins, Olafson, Middlestack, Kubelik. Hey, it looks like I read my comment section. Flip Skinner for a combination of third liners and you need picks and prospects. That way you're not in cap hell when Middlestat is ready to cash in from his breakout year, which he's definitely having this year, and Risto is ready for a monster extension because he sims so well, he's going to ask for 9 or 10 million and you can't afford a breakout up Rasmus squared. I know, I'm thinking about this. This is a contract year for Risto. He's going to want big boy money, nine, ten million dollars. Who knows what it's going to be? And there's no way we're going to be able to afford that with the nine million dollar man, Jeff Skinner. Now, it's not like Skinner's having a bad year. It's not like he's a bad player. He's just overpaid. Now, I had this big spiel in the last episode about how I wanted to keep the core players together, win a cup here in Buffalo. Well, when you're making nine million, dollars sometimes you got to make tough choices we got rid of Kyle Ocpozo and that was a huge move for us getting us a legitimate starting goalie in Elvis Merzlikens so that's great that was a great move for us we shed some big cap that allowed us to hang on to Taylor Hall that allowed us to bring in a guy like Dominic Kubalik and that's going to allow us to pay for guys like Casey Middlestat and Rasmus and part of Rasmus squared Rasmus Aristolainen so Jeff Skinner 
it's time to go bye bye. But what do we do? All right, what do we do? I want to make sure we're going to get a plus one. Obviously, plus one's great. I'd love a plus three, and I would absolutely go crazy for a plus five. This year, plus fives are hard to get. So I'm going to say plus three is the exception for our top nine, and then plus five just going to be the cherry on top, obviously, because you can't change players' types this year. So I can't really expect me to get a bunch of plus fives right away. It's definitely something we have to work Now, to. I've been doing some homework and a lot of you guys in the comments, especially one person who slid into my DMs, he sent me something that's really gonna help me out. But this guy in the comments, he's an Oilers fan, he says to get plus five chemistry, you need power forward, playmaker, sniper. Well, would you look at that? Sniper, playmaker, power forward. Okay, I think you might be onto something with at least having three green check marks. So Dylan Cousins got three, we got Jack Eichel's got three green check marks, and then Taylor Hall's got three as well. If there was more green check marks, I'd assume this would be a plus five. I guess that's how it works. He just basically goes on to say that if you get a plus five, you're basically going to simulate like gods. This guy had players put up 130 points. It's especially difficult to get those max boosts this year with no player type editing. That's what I mean. I want to go for plus threes. If I can get a plus five, that would be amazing. Shout out to this guy though, who gave me a Reddit link in my DMs and I clicked it and, it, and it's basically a mini PowerPoint on how to get plus five alls. It's kind of funny. This guy had Felix Pox on his team, so he's obviously a subscriber. If this was you, let me know in the comments. You're just a random guy on Reddit, but he basically puts together this little uh, PowerPoint that actually helps out a lot. It's really no secret that playmaker, power forward, sniper are the way to go. Unfortunately, two-way forwards aren't great for chemistry, and that sucks because Anthony Sorelli is awesome, and I don't want to trade him right away because he's so young. We paid a second round pick to get him. He's locked up for 2.6, so unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to get a plus three or a plus five on our third line. But hey, I mean, we'll try it. So we're going to have to trade Jeff Skinner for a sniper uh, and potentially a playmaker. So uh, we have our power forward in Tage Thompson. We're going to hang on to him, even though I wouldn't mind completely revamping this third line. Thing is, since Jeff Skinner has such good trade value, we can probably trade him for two or three players. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look around the league and I have a few players in mind that I want to trade for and we're gonna see what's up to the New York Rangers all the way here to NYR the Big Apple how's it going they're doing pretty good 26 uh, 16 and 8 so definitely not a bad year for the Henrik Lundqvist less New York Rangers. they're obviously got their stud in net Igor and then they got Georgiev there but how are they looking on the wings could they use a guy like Jeff Skinner they obviously got Kapokako Bushnevik and Vitaly Kravtsov. That's the guy I'm looking for. He's 22 years old. He's a right wing power forward, okay? I would really, really like to get Vitaly Kravtsov. So let's chuck him on there, okay? Now we need a center. Is there a center playmaker you guys have? Someone, maybe like a third liner, not Brand, not Brandon Sutter. Uh, Howden, is he a playmaker? Oh, he's a two-way forward. Damn it. All right, that's what I'm saying. It's going to be difficult to make this work. It's going to be really difficult. Sam Gagne, like these guys just aren't good enough for the third line, unfortunately. Obviously, Ryan Getzlaff is a power forward. That's not going to work. I need a playmaker. Give me a playmaker. Uh, Jeremy Bracco, he's got way too high trade value for some reason. He's simulating amazing, so the trade value glitch is definitely here to stay. And then Brandon Sutter is a two-way forward, so that's not going to work. Maybe we'll have to have a closer look around the league here. Maybe you get a playmaker and a sniper from somewhere else. But a guy like Vitaly Kravtsov, that's a guy I really want. I'm sure there's more power forward wingers out there, but Kravtsov is a guy that I really like. He's huge. He's six foot four. I mean, the same thing for Tage Thompson, really. I mean, he's big, but I don't know. I don't know if I like Tage Thompson as much as I like uh, Vitaly Kravtsov. Now, he fits in on our forward second line, but we could probably slot him in on the third line. Let me see. The big thing is the big thing here is going to be finding a third line playmaking centerman. That's going to be the difficult part. So let me see if I can find something here that fits the bill. Let's have a look. We specifically need a playmaker to make this work. And then we could trade, obviously, Jeff Skinner. We could figure out what we're going to do. It's difficult because the trade values are still glitched, which is really, really, really annoying. Uh, Vlad Nemestikov, he's more of a winger anyways. I don't want to pay a ton. Uh, Jordan Cairo, he's a playmaker. Okay. Even though he's probably better fitted for a winger. Um, he's... 
I kind of want someone who's established. Uh, Paul Stastny, he's really old though. That's too. That's a little bit too established for my liking. Eric Howla, is he good enough? 30 years old, playmaker. He's got decent face-offs. He can get the job done. It's not ideal, but it's okay. Sammy Blay, former channel legend. He has terrible face-offs. He's not a center. Vinny Henestroza, so there's not a lot out there for playmaking centers, unfortunately. And as I say that, I see Alex Kerfoot, who is making $3.5 million for two years. Um, it looks like he would fit more in our top six. I'm thinking about putting him on the third line to center our new power forward and our new sniper that we're going to get. We might be able to make something work here with Alex Kerfoot, because I don't want to get a guy like Kaylor Yamamoto or someone like that who's young, who's going to want to play in the top six like next year. I want a guy who's going to be on our third line and who's going to be comfortable sticking around there. I don't want to get a guy who's crazy young and crazy good that's just going to you know push for a job in our top six. I want a guy who's comfortable playing the third line position. Let's see what's up with Alex Kerfoot. Now the problem is they have a, oh my god, they are paying Zach Hyman 7.7 .7 million. Oh my goodness. So that's the problem. They are, ooh, there's Ilya Mikheyev as well. We could solve all of our problems here with, uh, oh no, he's a two-way forward, not a power forward. All right, maybe not. The problem is Toronto does not have the cap to take on a guy like Jeff Skinner at all. So Isaac Lundstrom is available as well. He's coming off his entry-level deal. He's going to want to get paid, but it's not going to be a ton of money. Uh, Derek Ryan, that's another guy. He's got 86 face-offs playmaker, but he's 35 years old. Oh, man. There are some options. Eric Howell is out there. He's cheap. There's some options. Nick Cousins, he's making 1.5 million. He's making basically nothing. Uh, that's not bad at all. Jason Spezza, Jordan Cairo. I like Isaac Lundstrom, to be honest with you. And Anaheim has cap, so they could take on Jeff Skinner. Let's see if we can work something out here with Isaac Lundstrom. Okay, so remember when I said I thought Anaheim had cap? They have no cap space. So that's... That sucks. But they have some interesting players here that I... I do. Oh, wait, hold on. Did I see Patrick Marlowe's on the Anaheim Ducks? That's weird. That shouldn't be a thing. I don't like that. I don't like it at all. But Maxime Comtois, who is 23 years old, he's playing in the minors, 81 overall. He needs a shot. Get this guy in the NHL. They're burying him. So if I could get Maxime Comtois and Isaac Lundstrom, there is our second... There's our third line center and our third line uh, power forward. So, tr so I would definitely trade Tage Thompson and a pick and then just basically offload Jeff Skinner for whatever. But then that means that we're going to have to demote, uh, where is he? He is, he have like low trade value or something. Or we could swap, do a little swappy here for Anthony Sorelli. All right, so he's yeah. We might have to th we might have to throw Sorelli in this deal here. Like we could do that easily, and then there's that issue basically saved. That's great. We could throw in Tage Thompson as well. We can make this work. Let me figure this out. Okay, so I'm thinking of something like this. Now, Anthony Sorelli's trade value is inflated. I know we just got him, unfortunately, but two-way forwards don't really work with chemistry. So we give up Anthony Sorelli, who has a ton of trade value, and he's probably the better player. Honestly, we're probably giving Anaheim the better player here, but I'm going all in on chemistry. I'm really hoping this works, to be honest with you. I'm really, really hoping. We're basically giving Anthony Sorelli and uh, Tage Thompson in exchange for for Maxime Comtois and Isaac Lundstrom, a second and a third. I want to get prospects, but they don't really have any prospects. I think this is the best deal out there. I'm going to have one more look around, but I think, honestly, this is the best we're going to do here. We're getting a playmaker, a power forward, and then we basically just trade Jeff Skinner for a really good third-line sniper, and hopefully we get a plus three, and then we can go off the, to the promised land. Honestly, I've looked around, and with the trade values being glitched, with what's going on right now, it's really difficult to make a trade. So I think I'm going to go back to Anaheim. We're going to bite the bullet on Anthony Sorelli. I, I really like Anthony Sorelli, but unfortunately, I just don't think it's the right fit. So we're going to go ahead, go to Anaheim, get Maxime Comtois. We're also going to get Isaac Lundstrom, and we are going to make this trade happen. They don't really have a ton of prospects either, and the prospects they do 
do have, aside from this guy who is apparently their best, uh, looks like he's their best prospect, but the rest of them are like two-way forwards, so I don't really want any of these guys to be honest with you. I mean, I might just throw in one of these guys, a 60 overall 19-year-old, just to you know sweeten the pot a little bit, but I think we're going to make this trade happen. It's definitely going to go through because uh, Anthony Sorelli has a ton of terms, so unfortunately it didn't work out here with Anthony Sorelli, but we're going with the chemistry route. We're going to see if it all works out in the end. I'm really hoping I'm making the right move. Now, Anthony Sorelli's trade value is a bit inflated. I could probably go and get a little bit more, but I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to make the deal go through. A couple of young kids looking to prove themselves. We can probably get them for pretty cheap next year. A potential roster player for year five and a third round pick for Anthony Sorelli and Tage Thompson. Yes, this is going to go through. Now, here's where the glitch happened. If I go manage my own roster, that means the game's going to basically freeze on me. So I have to go best roster and then we have to edit lines on our own all over again. Okay, let me get those guys in the lineup and then I'm going to see about moving Jeff Skinner. Okay, so I'm not seeing a plus three with Skinner, Lundstrom, and Maxime Comtois, unfortunately, but, um, oh man, I'm hoping I made the right move. Okay, so let's see here. They don't have that many green check marks. Maxime Comtois has only got one, uh, but this still does give it a plus one. Let's see if we can get a legitimate third line score in exchange for Jeff Skinner. This is gonna be the hard trade to make. This is gonna be the difficult one. Okay, so the thing is, we need a sniper. There's no two ways about it. He has to be a sniper. So what's out there? Uh, Oliver Bjorkstrand, he's making $4 million. He is in a contract year. Tyler and this thing is the trade values are so messed up that it makes it so much more annoying. Uh, Daniel Sprong. Okay, so he's a sniper. He definitely is a sniper. Would he fit? Says he fits in our top six. He's a 24-year-old sniper looking for a uh, team to prove himself on because he's playing on Washington right now. Not really doing a whole lot. Yeah, that, would, that would definitely work. Uh, Jake DeBrusque. That's not bad. I would like Jake DeBrusque as well. He is a sniper. That would work out really nice. The thing is, he's cheap. He's really cheap. But so is um, so is Daniel Sprong. Owen oh, Tippett's on a contract year. He's going to want big boy money. That's probably not going to work. Um, um, ooh, talk about cheese in the system, Eli Tolvanen. All right, so he's not even playing. I would absolutely love to get Eli Tolvanen. He would be perfect. Oh, man, he would be so damn good. And they're not even playing him. Oh, my God, I have to look just because. I have to check. Nashville, what are you doing? They don't have the cap, unfortunately. Oh, man, I would love for this to go through here. What's what's it gonna take? All right, let's throw Jeff Skinner here. It doesn't it's not like he has a ton of trade value actually. So we'd have to take on a bad contract, which I'm not opposed to doing if it's just for one more year. And they look like they have no one with terrible deals. I mean, Miku Koivu, he could slot in on the fourth line, I guess. Um, that looks like the worst contract we could take on. Is that even going to be enough to get it done? Unfortunately not. Tolvanen, I, Tolvanen, I think is a little bit too good, unfortunately. And he's going to definitely be a top six player in the future. Ilya Kovalchuk, our pro scout, says he doesn't fit at all. So I think we're going to stay away from Ilya Kovalchuk, even though it's kind of the perfect player. Thing is, we're dealing with teams that we need them to be able to take on a guy like Jeff Skinner. So what about Jake DeBrusque? Uh, do the uh, Boston Bruins have enough cap? I don't think they do. This is going to be a very difficult trade to make. They want Jeff Skinner, which is nice, but yeah, they're way over. They're not that much over, actually. Ooh, we could take on a badish contract. Do they have any? Andre Kasha, ooh, six years at five million. That's a lot of money. Oh my goodness. Do they have anyone else like John Moore or Nick Ritchie? I don't want to take on Moore for two years. I want a one-year deal. Who's on a one-year deal making a lot of money? No one. Great. I guess Nick Ritchie. Oh man, he's a power forward, right? Yeah, he's actually not bad. We can always eat a little bit of Jeff Skinner's cap as well. So if we, you know, eat a million bucks, will that work? That'll go through. If we eat a million bucks for Jake DeBrusque, honestly, that's a huge win. Will this trade go through? Trade accepted! Oh my god, I can't believe they did that. I mean, I can because the trade values are glitched, but Jake DeBrusque, that's our third line sniper. Welcome to Buffalo. You almost feel good 
guilty. I almost feel guilty. You are paying... Oh my God, hold on. Let's have a look here. Just at Boston here, we kind of put them in cap hell. They're paying, oh my God, they have P.K. Subban. They're paying P.K. Subban $9 million. It's only for one more year, I guess. Uh, Pasta is on the best deal in the entire league. Brad Marchand, I guess it's, I guess we didn't put him really in cap hell, but they do have to pay Adam Larson 4.7 for the next six years. Charlie McAvoy is going to want to get paid. Andre Kasha. So yeah, they got some bad contracts. Hey, Dougie Hamilton went back to Boston. That's kind of funny. Okay, now the moment of truth. Did I make the right moves? Did I do it? Did I do the right thing? Let's have a look. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> this changes things. DeBrusque, Middlestat, and Kubalik are a plus five. And I didn't even put him there. What if I put DeBrusque there? Uh, no, what about you? It's still only a plus one. Oh no, now that I saw it's a plus five, that ruins my plan? God damn. <laughs> okay, uh, Dylan Cousins. What if I chucked you there? Three, five, and one? Oh no, <laughs> that ruins it. Oh god, okay. Well, that's really annoying to be honest with you very very annoying if i do that that's not good oh man well it's good to know jake debrus gives it a plus five that's awesome okay that's great news if we did something like this like is that gonna oh. yeah jake debrus is perfect for the second line oh my god he loves the second line absolutely loves it so i don't think we really have a choice so now what <laughs> oh man we have one too many good forwards i mean i really want dylan cousins to go with hall and eichel uh pierlini loonstra and uh, Victor Olofsson, I guess. Or if we do that, it gives it a plus one if we put Maxime Comtois there. So we could do that. I I'm sorry, Victor Olofsson. We're paying him $8 million or whatever to sit on the third line. 7.5. Okay, let's let's roll with this. Okay, we have our plus five. What if we do this? It's a plus three. So, I mean, three, three, and one or three, five, and one. I think you gotta go with a plus five. They're so damn hard to get, you gotta go with it. Victor Olofsson, you're gonna teach these two young kids how to play, even though you're only a couple years older. These guys don't have a ton of NHL experience. We got a playmaker, a power forward, and a sniper. So hypothetically, it should work, but I understand why it doesn't. Honestly, that plus five really, really threw a lot at me. That threw me for a whirl, but that's how this looks. Uh, that's actually supposed to be like that, but it's good to know that that works either way and then goaltenders we are good to go let's get some simulation done all right just made a whole bunch of trades we got officially our first plus five not how i wanted it but dylan cousins on the first line let me make sure the power play is all good to go and then we are going to probably get the year done honestly this video could be a long one i hate the fact that olison is on the third line i hate it i hate it i hate it but we have a plus five so it's all good for some reason anaheim is playing patrick marlowe over Anthony Sorelli. I don't understand it. Uh, how about Boston? So Boston is putting Jeff Skinner on the second line. That's fantastic. Uh, him with Coil and Kasha. That's a lot of money on that second line. That's a lot of dough. You got 8 million, you got 5.2, and, and you got 5.5. So very, and they're all locked up for over five years. That's a lot of. That's a rough look there for Boston, but good luck to Jeff Skinner. I'm not going to do a big sob story because we're going for chemistry. We're going for science, and you guys in the comments have officially converted me to the chemistry. Let's go. Game number one against the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, I'm not going to do too many slow sim games because this video is already going to be a long one, but let's go here. Game number one with our first plus five period number one, and it's two to one. Dylan Cousins, first line. Dylan Cousins, Victor Olofsson, he doesn't carry, he's on the third line, Sebastian Ajo scores for them, period number two, five to one, Casey Middlestack, Gergensons, and Taylor Hall going into the third, are we just going to keep, keep on pouring it on, there you go, Taylor Hall on the power play, six to one, I mean, I don't expect us to win every single game here, but I think that plus five is definitely going to help, nothing from Jake DeBrusque on the goal department here, but I'm sure he's got a couple of apples, uh, 
Uh, closing in on 30 shots, six goals. We have this thing all wrapped up. All that's left to do is put a bow on it, and we do just that. Six to two. Thanks for coming out, Carolina. I just want to quickly have a look here. Jake DeBrusque in his first game. He had an apple. He was a plus one, so really can't complain there. A solid night from everyone else. Two points for Eichel. What else do you expect? Guy's a monster. So since we made all of our... Ooh, we got a trade here. Uh, fourth and a fourth for Matthew Phillips and a six. No, thank you. Uh, since we made all of our trades there, I don't think... Oh, another move. Ajax Alifalo. Um, I mean, I might as well look at it. I think he has a lot of trade value, though. Oh, not a ton. Uh, Ajax Alifalo. Is he even good? Why am I even looking at this? Two-way forward? Get out of here. Not happening. I know there's going to be some comments about the Anthony Sorelli thing. I didn't want to trade Anthony Sorelli if he was... Oh, my God. You, you think we're going to take this deal with Minnesota? The worst contract in the league? One of the worst contracts get out of here. I didn't really want to trade Anthony Sorelli. Honestly, I'm a big Anthony Sorelli fan. I get him in a lot of my franchise modes as one of the comments actually pointed out, but he's a two-way forward. It doesn't work out for chemistry. I think you guys understand. I'm here to win a cup and we are doing fantastic. So I think the chemistry thing definitely is making a big difference here. Big 7-2 to two win there. Oli Mata, don't need ya. Jeff Carter, don't need ya. And Ola Lilia, don't want to trade you best name in the game um let's just check out the um the trade deadline here i know it's a big deal i don't really want to skip over it but we kind of already made our moves let's see who's on the block anyways see if any big deals do happen ryan Suter, no way you're going to move that contract at 37 so have four years left at 7.5 that's a big yikes uh braden holtby dominic cahoon oh no they didn't get to sign him oh man chicago what are you doing? All right. Well, that's let's just let's just leave that at a broken AI. So I'm just gonna wait around the trade deadline, see if anything happens. Um, there'll probably be some trade alerts. I'll let you guys know when they happen. Oh, we got a trade offer right away. Brendan Gallagher for two firsts. Oh my God. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, that's a trade. Brendan Gallagher and Jake Allen for two firsts. Galley's awesome. I love me some Brendan Gallagher. He's a two-way forward though. I mean, it might be too harsh on two-way forwards. I don't think we're going to make this move. We don't need another top six forward, especially because we have Victor Olofsson on the third line. Uh, am I being too harsh on two-way forwards, or what do you guys think? All right, we've got our first trade of the day. Uh, the Islanders trade a second in Tanner Pearson for Jonas Brodin and a third. Jonas Brodin is on a big boy contract and a fourth, actually, so that's a lot of cap to take on there for the New York Islanders. I'm not going to sit here until noon, but maybe I'll sit here until like 8.30, maybe see what other trades pop up, because we don't need to make any other moves. Our lineup is perfect, except for the fourth line. I mean, we might be able to have a look around and see what's out there for a fourth liner. Um, the Minnesota Wild make another trade. They trade Tuka Rask and Adam McQuaid to the Maple Leafs in exchange for Zach Hyman. Tuka goes to the Toronto Maple Leafs, the team that drafted him. i got to have a look at their roster now. Zach Zach Hyman's making seven million bucks, so Minnesota offloaded a huge contract and they get one back. So who are they going with in net? They got Tuca now, which is weird. Uh, Tuca, yeah. So I guess they needed a starting goalie and they got one. So good for the Maple Leafs. Of course they get Tuca Rask. Of course they do. We are going to make a minor move here. We are going to send fourth liner Brandon Pierlini. Oh, wait a minute. We got to trade the Rangers. They trade a second, a couple of a couple of seconds and a prospect to the Wild again for Ryan Suter. As I said, they're never going to be able to trade that contract. Oh my God, Rangers, what are you doing? Okay, we'll have a look at that after. But here is what I want to do. I was having a closer look at the guy who sent me that little cheat sheet, the little slideshow for the chemistry and he says on your fourth line go two-way forward two-way forward two-way forward I don't know if that's really gonna work but hey I'm gonna try it we got Brandon Pierlini here oh we got a trade I missed out on what that was with the uh, New Jersey Devils but we're gonna go after Sean Corrali another former Boston Bruins so he's a fourth liner he's listed as a fourth liner and he's much better than Brandon Pierlini and he's a two-way forward so I hope this will go through Brandon Pierlini for Sean Corrali will that go through 
trade accepted. There you go. Pittsburgh, they make a deal. They trade Hoffman and a third to the LA Kings for Eric Gustafson. Okay. Um, I do want to have a look at the Rangers, though. They took Ryan Suter. I would assume there has to be some sort of cap being retained by the Minnesota Wild because that is brutal. Nope, they are paying his full contract. Yikes. All right, I'm done here. We got, oh, wait a minute. No, I'm not. The Colorado Avalanche trade Martin Kout and a second to the Canucks for Braden Holtby. Okay, um, I like Martin Kout and a lot of picks. That's a good move for the Canucks, I think. Anyways, all right, let's get out of here. Uh, I could sit here all day. We got a video to make here. We got a President's Trophy potentially to win. So let me go ahead and I got to go best lines again because of that glitch. I can't afford to corrupt my file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go best lines and then I got to go in and uh, figure out what the hell I'm going to do. Uh, so Chicago offloads Brent Seabrook. Oh my god this is all about offloading huge contracts. Brent Seabrook he's gone. Jeff Skinner he's gone. Oh my god Ryan Suter. Okay well congrats to them. Martin Marinson do we want Martin Marinson? Leaf fans are screaming right now. Don't get this guy. I'm going to stay away. We have Madison Bowie down in the AHL. I don't need to make another big move. So I'm going to go ahead, edit up the lines one more time, do a bit of a power sim, and then get this year done and see if we get another plus five or a plus three or even a plus one on the fourth line. Okay, so we didn't do anything. Um, that's a yikes. So Sean Corrali, um, yep, that didn't do a thing. Great. Perfect. Love that. Um, I mean, if we put Maxime Comtois there, it does give it a plus one, and he is listed as a fourth liner. Okay, all right, so we go Sean Corrali, Lundstrom, and Olafson. so that's what, sniper, playmaker, two-way forward, so maybe I was being too harsh on two-way forwards, but I was hearing in the comments, you guys were saying two-way forwards are not the move, two-way forwards are not the move, so I don't know, um, we made that we made that small trade, I like I like Sean Corrali, um, Maxime Comtois, that's fine, all right, let's get some more simulation done, we got a plus five, I'm happy with that, looks like we don't have any games against Boston, which sucks, and we don't have any games against Anaheim, so we can't even slow sim those games. You hate to see it. All right, well, let's just get a bunch of simulation done anyways. Any former any former teams? Like, we play the Coyotes at all? We don't. Uh, we do play the Rangers, so we can go say what's up to the Rangers and maybe what could have been with uh, Vitaly Kravtsov, but we decided to go in another direction. 10-3. to That's what I'm talking about. Take that, Toronto. 10-3. to We put up 10 goals on the Maple Leafs. Welcome to Toronto, Tuka Rask. Hope you're enjoying your stay. Maple Leafs could not contain Taylor Hall as he puts up three tallies. Hashtag Hattie. And then Hall had four points in the 10-3 win. There you go, Taylor Hall. That's what I love to see. Score against the Leafs. Keep doing that. Thank you. We are 7-2-1 in our last 10, so we've definitely turned it around. We had 57 wins last year. Are we going to have more this year? I don't know. Maybe if we really turn it on here. we got to get a lot of wins, though, so let's keep them coming. That's three, four straight wins up against the... Oh, my God. We lost 12-5? to five? What the hell is going on? Okay, we're going to just not pretend that happened. We let in 12 goals. Okay. Merzlikens, uh, you know there was a game, right? Did you... <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, so up against the New York Rangers here with newly acquired $7.5 million man Ryan Suter. Let's go, period number one. Vitaly Kravtsov, don't score a million goals on me. Uh, Dylan Cousins, first liner, Dylan Cousins. Casey Middlestat, Adam Fox, and Jeremy Brocco both score power play goals for them, so their power play is lethal. Period number two. Three to two, Rasmus the King. Dolan, there you go, big power play goal of his own. Absolutely love Rasmus Dolan. I'm buying a Buffalo Sabres Rasmus Dolan jersey in real life. I think the kid is so damn good. And that is the go ahead goal with nine minutes left. Power play for the Rangers, no power play goal for you. We have a huge lead in shots, and Elvis, baby, he's stopping everything. 30 shots doesn't matter because he secures the bag, and we have another victory up against the Rangers. Big two points, keep it going.
So I don't think we're going to hit 57 wins, but it's still been a very successful year. You guys wanted trades, and I gave you some trades. I saw some people saying, you're only here for five years. Why not have some fun with it? And I did just that. So we made some moves here. I'm happy with how the team looks. A plus five is awesome. We're going to compare stats once this season is over. We put up 10 goals on the Maple Leafs a couple weeks ago. Can we do it again? We're at the whatever the Maple Leafs arena is called. It's always going to be the ACC to me. We're at the ACC, but not really. Let's go. First period, 0-0. Zero, zero. A little bit more of a quiet one than what we had a couple weeks ago. Period number two, one nothing. Victor Olofsson, third liner. Victor Olofsson, you hate to see it. I love an insurance marker here. A, maybe a Dylan Cousins insurance marker or a Maxime Comtois, fourth liner. Someone? Oh, Sean Corrali, shorthanded, baby. You love to see it. That's what I'm talking about. Sean Corrali. It's the small moves that add up. It's the little ones we score a huge goal there and that's going to be the insurance marker Casey Middlestack gets one more just for fun and we shut out the Maple Leafs poor Tuka Rask man he just he just hates playing against Buffalo all right so we got one more game against the Leafs why not slow sim that one it's going to be the second last game of the year we'll have a look at all the stats see if anyone guessed Taylor Hall's goal production uh let's see here up against oh there you go two straight wins up against the Habs and the Panthers were catching fire at the right time. We're not going to have 57 wins, but hopefully we'll have 53 if we can win our next two games here. We got a back-to-back. -back. We shut out the Leafs last time we played them. Can we do it again? Period number one. Casey Middlestat. First liner, Dylan Cousins shorthanded, and then Devon Tays. There you go. Three goals on 12 shots. Poor Tuka Rask. Mitch Marner scores the one goal for them. Period number two. All right, 4-2. Henry Yoki Haru and Timothy Liljegren. Couple, uh, couple of nice European defensemen there scoring goals. Can we hold off the Maple Leafs power play? Oh, there it is. Austin Matthews. But then Curtis Lazar, fourth liner, baby. Jack Eichel, first liner, scoring goals. He loves to see it. Alex Kerfoot, we had a brief look at him at the uh, closer to the trade deadline. Didn't end up pulling the trigger. We went with the younger crowd and Isaac Lundstrom and uh, Maxime Comtois. I think in the comments, oh there you go Jack Eichel once again. I think in the comments that's going to be the move that people question the most but uh, Jack Eichel had a huge night there and we put up seven goals against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Poor guys. Oh man, poor Toronto. Poor Tuka Rask. Alright, we're on a roll here let's go ahead slow sim the last game just for fun can we hit win number 53 first period three nothing dominic kubalik gets two eichel gets one 15 to four are the shots buffalo can't be stopped period number two okay three one sveshnikov it wasn't a lacrosse goal well maybe it was definitely would be a creative one teddy bluger he scores on upl we started our backup on a back-to-back -back. makes sense we're almost doubling them in shots and jake de he scores on Aaron Dell. There you go, buddy. Big goal. Newly acquired Jake DeBrusque. Plus five Jake DeBrusque, might I add. Four to two. 37 to 19 are the shots. Why are you inviting me to a party? Four to three. Sebastian Ajo. Oh, man. They almost tied it up, but Jake DeBrusque with the GWG. That's a big one. Let's have a look at how the team did in the regular season. Have a look at some stats. We had 113 points. Is that good enough for a President's Trophy? And Jack Eichel hit the century mark 100 points. We'll look at the stats once I know who we have in the first round. We got kicked out of the playoffs last year by the Tampa Bay Lightning. Let's see who we got in round number one here. That was the second round, by the way. And we have the Florida Panthers, a rematch of last year. If we check out the stat sheet, first link in the description, obviously you can see we got rid of Florida in six games. They're struggling going into the playoffs. They're limping while we are on fire. Seven, one, and two in our last ten. Obviously took them out in six games, so I'm not super worried about the Florida Panthers. But let's have a look at the season stats, and let's check out how the newly acquired players did. So 53 wins, 100. 13 points that good enough for a president's trophy yeah baby there you go president's trophy buffalo sabers goals for of course we scored the most goals goals against we allowed the fewest that's the second straight year that's happened at a boy elvis 
you absolutely love to see it. Power play percentage, 25%. It's good enough for top 10-ish. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, PK, 75.1. It's not as great as it was last year. 75.1. It's actually way down here. We're bottom 15, so that's not great. Our PK um, wasn't great, but hey, it's all good. We scored a lot of goals. We didn't allow a lot. That's what matters. Home and away, basically exactly the same. Let's have a look at individual stats. I'm interested to see how many points Jake DeBrusque and the new guys had, but Jack Eichel, 100 points on the year. He had 108 last year, puts up the century mark once again, plus 46. Things you love to see. Taylor Hall with 93, 47 goals. That's impressive. Unfortunately, no one in the comments guessed 47 goals. This guy was real close. He guessed 46, but unfortunately, he had one more just to screw you over, but he was a plus 57 on the year. Not bad. And the 47th goal was the 300th of Taylor Hall's career. Fun fact. Victor Olofsson, 88 points on the third line. a boy. Obviously, he's getting uh, first line power play minutes, so I guess it's uh, I guess it's fine there. But there you go. Casey Middlestat, 85 points, 88 overall. He is going to ask for a boatload of money. I knew he was going to have a coming out party. There it is, 85 points. How you doing, Casey Middlestat? Dominic Kubalik, not bad, 74 points. Rasmus the King Dolan, uh, Dylan Cousins, there you go. So I actually didn't keep track of how many points he had before the episode started. Can someone go back and let me know how many points he had on the first line compared to uh, the third line? Can someone go back and check that out. That would be awesome. But a great rookie season for Dylan Cousins. 20 goals, 30 apples, 50 points. Jake DeBrusque. All right. So how many points did he have in his... Oh, wow. He had 27 points in 32 games. Not bad. Not bad at all. You think he likes playing in Buffalo? Plus 20. That's amazing. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted from Jake DeBrusque. I didn't expect it was going to be a plus 5, but it's clearly working out. 27 points in 32 games. I'll take that all day every day. Ryan Pollock had a great first year here in Buffalo. The other part of Rasmus squared, 45 points. Colin Miller had 30. Devontae's had 13 goals. a boy. Gergensen's, man, everyone's killing it. Sean Corrali, how many points did he have? He had 8 points in 21 games. It's not bad. I'll take it. There you go. Uh, Curtis Lazar had a good year on the fourth line. Isaac Lundstrom, how many points did he have? 14 and 32. So it's not bad. It's better than his production in Anaheim. I will take that as as well. As for Maxime Comtois, he, he played 32 games this year, none with Anaheim in the NHL. Obviously, he was playing down there in the minors, but nine points in 32 games. Got demoted to the fourth line because Sean Corrali kind of worked out better on the third, but there you go. Let's have a look at the goalies. I assume it was carried by Elvis, and it was a 9-10 save percentage and a 272 goals against. Not bad at all. 13-7 and seven for UPL. I'll take it. Have a quick look look at the entire league. That's just the Western Conference. Let's look at the entire league. Why don't we? Andre Vasilevsky had 44 wins, but an 896 save percentage. So not great. Definitely not great. Uh, the, so it looks like um, looks like Elvis was kind of right up there with the best of the best for save percentage. Yaros and Jari had better. Obviously, Cal Peterson only played four games, so we're not going to count that. Uh, 919 for Tristan Jari, a 911 for UC Saros. Halak, I don't know if we'll count that. Jordan Bennington and Elvis. So they have put up some pretty good numbers. Not bad from Elvis. And for a starting goalie, I guess Elvis had the best goals against average. I mean, 25 games, it's kind of backup numbers. So for starting goalie, Elvis had the best. We could see a uh, maybe a little Vesna trophy here from our boy Elvis. Oh, poor Linus Olmark. Oh man, he's not having a good time. At 5.3 goals against Yikes. Sorry, buddy. Sorry that didn't work out in Buffalo. No hard feelings, though, right? Oliver Wallstrom looks like he's going to take home the Calder. 77 points. Here's the rest of the rookies around the National Hockey League. And we'll have a look at rookie goalies just for fun. There wasn't many of them. Uh, looks like UPL was the best, so that's kind of fun. But here we go. We made some moves. Looking back at it now, I can already hear the comments saying you shouldn't have traded Anthony Sorelli. You shouldn't have traded Anthony Sorelli. Maybe it would have worked. Maybe it would have worked for, you know, Maxime Comtois 
Dubois, Anthony Sorelli, and Victor Olofsson. Maybe it would have worked, but who knows? We'll never know really at this point. I'm happy with the moves that we made. Every line has at least a plus one. Our top line is now a plus three, and we have a random plus five, which is awesome. I love the way this team looks going into the playoffs. I'm thinking cup or bust. We have some players down here in the American Hockey League that we can bring up if need be. Looks like Habby Bulin had a nice year with Rochester, 33 points. As a rookie, I'll take that. He's basically ready for the NHL next year. Definitely going to have to make room for him. Uh, if we can bring any one of these players up if we really need to. So thank you guys for watching. I can already tell I'm going to get shit on for the Anthony Sorelli trade, but I was going off your guys' comments. I'm going for chemistry, and it looks like it's working out because we have 80 locker room in chemistry. We have a god-tier coach. I'm happy with how this team's looking. Let's get that cut for Jack. I'll see you guys in the year two playoffs in the next one.